Alright guys, it's Radian, and for today's video I'm going to go over the different masteries for Wolves World, basically how useful they are, what they do, and the order to get them on based on your playstyle and your Wolves World tier. Then in the description I'll have a few lists, um, and you'll just basically choose one based on those things, and I'll tell you how to pick which list too in the description. So I'm just going to go over in the video each of these masteries. So Burning Oil, uh, great for defenders, useless otherwise. If you max it out, you can reflect projectiles. That's good because you can reflect the projectiles from the Omega. It'll slow down an Omega rush really quick. It'll also make you survive a little bit longer. Um, draining Supply is also good because that'll make the other team have to resupply before attacking the structure again unless you're not able to take out the Rams because your oil gets taken out first. Reducing the damage you take and reducing the damage oil bot receives, that's good because the oil already takes a while to take out. It has a lot of health. Um, increasing the radius is really only good if the Rams are spread out. So in Warpus World, Commanders like to spread out the rams. It's good. And Edge of the Mist commanders are dumb. They don't spread out the rams. Um, Catapult Mastery. This is actually good because it increases the damage you do, it increases the radius, and gives you the bubble. The purpose of the bubble is just for Wolver's World, not really Edge of the Mist. It's for uh, defending against the mortar shots and the trap shots that'll take out your catapults in about usually six to nine hits. So that's really good for Wolver's World and Edge of the Mist. That usually won't happen to you because of the way the stuff is designed and because people don't quite defend as much. Increasing damage is good for the catapult. Increasing the radius is really good for when you're trying to hit two walls at once. Um, so even though gravel shot applies bleeding useless, uh, increased damage on the walls, good. So even though these are good, in Wolverse World for the higher tiers you can always have people who have mastery so you don't even need to get this if you're in higher tier Wolverse World. If you're in the lower tiers Go ahead and get it. Uh, mercenaries Bane increased damage uh, and defense against mercenaries. That's the highly dredging ogres. This one's pretty useless unless you're like tier seven or eight and soloing that stuff. I, that would be like basically right around the last thing you get. Guard killer. This is best for roamers because you do twenty percent damage more to every NPC at the supply camps. Um, for zerglings, it's not really that use. It's just a little useful, but you wouldn't get get it very early. This is more, if you're if you're zerging and you want this, this is more for people who use zerker gear. If you're like a bunker person, don't even worry about increasing your damage to the uh, champion lord. Uh, siege bunker. 10% increased siege defense. I personally don't think you should go for this that early. If you're able to dodge red rings and know how siege works, you don't need that. Shield generator mastery. If you have it maxed out, it's pretty good for attackers because you can defend against arrow cart fire. So that's good for making sure your catapults and rams don't be taken out by arrow cards. You can also use it when you're pushing a choke in a tower or keep as the gate goes down. Um, so if you don't have shield generator mastery max, don't even man a shield generator on offense. For defense, you don't really need it maxed out. It's not as important to be maxed out. Uh, increasing the duration is good because you increase the duration of force dome. That's better for defending against uh, any sort of projectiles or arrow cards if you have a max. Uh, increasing the radius, you know, if your siege is close together, the radius doesn't matter. If you're good, your commander will spread out the siege. So that's where the radius comes into play if you're defending. You don't need the radius for defending against the gate. You do need the radius for defending against the wall because some walls are wider than other walls. And so that's where the radius comes into play. If it's a thin wall, you don't need the radius for that one. Stability, that's good <coughs> for when you're about to push into a tower keep that's defended. Push the choke uh, mainly. And then if it's a Zerg battle, that's also good. Um, Aegis, I mean, that's alright. It's not really one of, it's not one of the more important parts of Shield Generator Mastery. Shield Generator Mastery, if you're a defender, try to get the radius increased um, and the duration increased. If you're an attacker, you need the you need it maxed out. But if you're in the top tiers, which are the ones that use Shield Generator as an offense, then you don't need a mastery because most people already have it, so it's redundant for you to get it. If you're on the lower tiers attacking, you don't even use it because it costs supply and you got to conserve supply for the rams. Build Master, you should get this. Um, I like to start out getting it to six so that if I have ten supply that I can hold, <clears throat> it's just two taps to get it. Um, you're going to want to get it maxed pretty early though because Build Master is pretty good. You want to build, build fast, not only so you can get the siege up earlier so you can start using it earlier, but you want to get it up early so that the siege actually gets built. If you're trying to build a blueprint under arrow cart fire, you may never even get it up. So you got to build it quick just to get it up. Once you get it up, the health is a lot more 
than what the blueprint has. So it's important that you have build master when you're building something that's defended. And then also, you don't want to stand on the blueprint very long if you're building under arrow cart fire, you might die. That's why you build it quick with build master, roll back. Pretty good. Cannon mastery, this is a little bit better than burning oil mastery. Obviously, this is for defenders. If you're not defending, this is useless. Increasing the chill duration is alright, but it's not really the importance of cannon mastery. I think the most importance of cannon mastery will come from this one right here, increasing the radius. And cannons, they can take out siege in two or three hits. They can take cat catapults and rams in two or three hits. They can take out an arrow cart or ballista in one hit. It does have a little bit less health. Um, blade damage is fine. You don't really need it that much. Cannon damage, good. Basic fire removes boons, that's good. Cannons also hit 35,000 on golems. So, cannon mastery is pretty good when you trade the radius. Um, supply master. If you are not commanding, just get it to 4 right here to get some supply back when you spend it. If you do command, you want to get it to 5 pretty early. So Supply Master is pretty good. You want to get it to 4 pretty early. If you're a commander, then you actually want to get it to 5. So your siege sites are vulnerable for 3 seconds when you deploy them. Because remember, when you deploy the build site, it has less health. A lot less health than when it's fully built. So when you're under arrow cart fire, you have to get it built. If you don't get it built right away, it's not going to get built because it's just going to keep taking damage, you're going to burn all your supply. That one's good uh, to get pretty early. Supply capacity, a lot of people don't like this because it costs so much, but I actually have a different opinion than most people. I like it because if you think about how many people already have all the Siege Masteries in Walvers World, if you have like 30 people who have Flame Ram Mastery in your Zerg, then whether or not you have Ram Mastery doesn't really make much of a difference. Same for Catapult Mastery. Now, that becomes redundant. With supply capacity, there's no redundancy for everyone having it. So you can carry more supply and help out your Zerg. If everyone has supply capacity, great. If everyone has RAM mastery, that's redundant. There's no redundancy with supply capacity. And because so many people already have all the Siege Masteries, it's pretty important to get supply capacity early. Uh, when the game first came out, it was not important to get this early because people need Siege Masteries. But now, so many people have it, it's not. you don't need the Siege Masteries as early as you used to. You can get the non-Siege non -siege Masteries are better. <clears throat> as a result of more people already having the Siege Masteries and having redundancy, blah 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 blah. So pretty good to get that one. Arrow Cart Mastery, you don't really need the poison. I think the most usefulness comes from this one. When you increase the radius, this makes the area more than twice as big that you're hitting with the Arrow Cart when you increase the radius from 360 to 540. So if you're defending, this is mandatory. If you're attacking, this is mandatory. If you're on an Arrow Cart at all, this is mandatory. So pretty good to get this early if you're on arrow carts. But remember, almost everyone has arrow cart mastery in World War So if your commander throws an arrow cart, it's going to be someone with mastery. So unless if you're defending, though, if you are defending, you need the mastery. If you're attacking, there's going to be someone who has mastery most of the time, almost all the time. Siege golem mastery, you know, you don't you don't need to get the ejection if you're really good with your skill five. Uh, increased vitality and toughness is fine, but you don't really need golem mastery because so many people already have golem mastery and unless the commander is going to throw like 20 golems and you don't really need it you can have people who have mastery but you know it's 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 fine it's probably average for a siege mastery but a lot of people already have it ballista mastery you don't need to increase the scatter shot radius mostly you're using ballistas to take out siege if it's open field siege that you're using which a lot of people obviously don't like then you mostly be using arrow carts um, increasing the ballista range. If you don't have ballista range, don't use a ballista. Um, the reason why you want ballista range if you're using a ballista is because if you want to ballista down an arrow cart, well, if you don't have the range traded, then someone who has arrow cart mastery can actually reach further than you can. So they'll just AC down your ballista build site. So you have to have ballista range and then build your ballista build site out of arrow cart range. How do you know if your build site's out of arrow cart range? Hold control on your keyboard, bring up the arrow cart name, and then just backpedal until the name starts to fade away. Once the name starts to fade away, you're out of arrow cart range. Bulger Ballista, skill 3, the arrow card's dead in one shot. But again, a lot of people have mastery. You never have more than one Ballista. So there's only one Ballista that's usually going to be manned for your Zerg ever at a time. And so it's not that important because, you know, you just need one person. It's not like you need 20 people to man it. And, oh, we need a lot of people with mastery now. And also, usually the commander will be the one to man it. Um, and Edge of the Mist is a little bit more useful to have this because you'll sometimes throw Siege because your commander might not have any idea what they're doing. So you might throw... Ballista to take down an arrow cart open field. You won't use this to take out any siege inside a tower or keep. Unless you're an EBG, where you have the high ground at Kitten Lake, Cloven, or Mendens. And Edge of the Mist or any of the Desert Borderlands maps, you will never be higher than any wall. So you need line of sight 
and you won't be able to take out siege inside a tower very often other than those three towers. Defense against guards, <clears throat> take less damage from the guards. It's fine if you're a roamer. If you're not a roamer, don't don't try to get this very early. Mortar mastery, you know, it's not quite as good as I'd say. Cannon mastery is better, followed by oil mastery and then mortar mastery for those three. Um, the concussion barrage is all right because if someone places catapults right below your mortar and catapults your wall. You can't hit them with the mortar because your skills they can go like I don't know 8,000 or 10,000 units in distance. The minimum range is around 1,500 or 2,000 units. So you actually cannot reach stuff right below you unless you have mortar mastery maxed out. You can concussion barrage because it's a green ring that you aim. So you can take down siege right below your mortar with this. But you know you have to max it out to get that. This is not quite as good as the other two masteries. Normally <clears throat> you're going to be mortaring not stuff that's right below you but stuff that's either at another tower or keep. And mortars can already take down siege in basically six to nine shots. So whether or not you increase the damage probably won't make that much of a difference because it already takes so few shots to take it out. Um, increasing the radius is good. The burn burning shots are really the, the primary use for mortars to take out siege. After you take out siege, you can switch the burning shells and just try to burn the zerg. So that's where this comes into play. But remember the primary use for taking out siege. If you're an attacker, obviously mortar mastery is useless. Siege might, 10% uh, more siege damage, this is good. You probably want to get this like 30% of the way through your masteries unless you're a roamer. Um, repair mastery, not that useful unless you're solo repairing something or you have like two or three people repairing something. You generally won't be repairing something as it's being attacked because you're going to be on your siege. If your siege gets taken out, then yes, you're going to siege disable and repair. That's where the repair mastery comes into play. But unless you're in that situation where all your siege is taken out, you're solo repairing, or if you're just having to be solo repairing something after an attack, that's really the only point where Repair Master comes into use. In general, not that important. Most of your time spent repairing is running from the supply depot to the wall, not actually repairing the wall. Trebuchet Mastery, don't max it out. You don't need to tread the supply depots. You can be trebbing the walls. Healing Oasis, you don't need that one. You can be trebbing. You're never going to treb heals for defense. You're going to basically be trebbing cows or normal shots for defense. Increase the radius trebuchet shot skills if you're on a gate treb. This is mandatory because World vs. World commanders do a good job of spreading out their siege, particularly to defend against trebs, spreading out their flame ramps. So you need to have mastery to increase the radius to make it easier to take out those rams on a gate because you can't usually see the rams if you're at the bottom on a treb. And then this will also make it a little bit easier if you're like from your EBG keep trebbing another tower to for defense to take out catapults or something. And then this will also make it easier to treb two walls with the same shot. So that's good. Cow drains supply from enemy players. This is extremely good. If you can cow an enemy zerg, drain a lot of their supply, force them to resupply. You can treb cows on your own gate for defense before siege gets built. Uh, if the siege does get built, then don't don't throw any cows. <coughs> Try to use the regular shots to take out the siege. Increase damage, obviously, that's good. Flame Ram Mastery, Iron Will. This one's useless for the most part. I mean, five seconds, out 50 allies within a 300 radius will take 50% reduced damage. The only two uses would be if you get ambushed or if you're pushing something that's defended, which does happen a little bit, but remember it's only 300 radius, so it's hard. You're not going to usually get a lot of your team unless you're like, stack on the ram for this buff, and that commanders don't do that. So you're usually not going to get that many of your zerglings, and then remember, if you're about to push a choke that's defended, you can't just sit on the ram waiting for your zerg to push and then use it when they push because the ram is right where a lot of the damage is taken. So usually once the gate goes down, if you're a rammer, your health's already low. So you have to get off that ram back up, get your health up before you push back. You can't just sit on the ram, wait for your zerg to push, and use it. So that's not that useful. Um, impact slam. This will launch enemies back. Mainly when people are trying to repair the gate, you use this. Not that useful in World World. Again, most people don't repair the gate. They'll use their defensive siege. And then a lot of the times they're repairing the gate is just when they're running back. So not that useful. It's a little bit more useful in Edge of the Mist because NPCs repair. Um, reduce recharge of flame ram skills, um, 30%, 33% recharge reduction. This one's extremely good. Um, in World vs. World, if you're on the top tiers, you don't need it because people have mastery, so you don't need to get it that early. Um, if you're on the lo uh, lesser tiers, like tier 7, 8, 
um, get this right away, like really early. Edge of the Mist, get this because even though a lot of people have mastery in Edge of the Mist, well, a little bit less than Orbis World, but a lot of people don't want to man the ramps or lazy. So if you're not lazy, get this. Pretty good. Um, structural vulnerability, that'll increase the siege damage, that's pretty good. And the character DPS damage to gates also, but remember most of your gate DPS comes from the siege. Iron Idol Manning Ram, that's pretty good if you're attacking something that is defended. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's basically just an overview of how all that the masteries work and which ones are good. Uh, check out the description for the best order based on your playstyle and tier. So, hope you guys enjoy the video and thanks for watching.